Hi first graders, here's video two for this week and you should have received in your packet a picture with Ralph on it and a picture with Grumpy Greg. So um, let's go with Grumpy Greg first and you see in the corner it's got g, g, there's that um, digraph. We, we kind of worked on some of these and our blend g, g before the um, before spring break so um, what I want you to do first of all there are two things you're gonna do before you read the story I'm actually gonna read it to you right now too but then you're gonna work through the story read it um, if you can't read those words by yourself then have an adult help you with those or an older sibling who can read them and then you're gonna answer the questions down below so, you're reading um, this little short passage here in order to answer these questions. Um, and that's called comprehension. So, first of all, the first thing I want you to do is get your favorite color, and I chose pink. And I went through the title, the story, and the three sentences and looked for all the grrrs, and I highlighted them. Grumpy Greg. I highlighted all of them I could find, and I found one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen of them. So when you're doing it, you should be able to find eighteen also. So you're gonna go through and mark those, and just know that when you see those marked, you're gonna they're gonna make the grr sound. And um. And then before I read this passage, it's called, the title of the story is Grumpy Greg, and I can see the picture tells me that Greg's probably a little guy, and Grumpy, the picture tells me that being grumpy, me, you can tell he's grumpy because he's crying. And I see there's a picture of some um, grapes and some grass, so I'm thinking that there's gonna be something in this story about grapes and gra grass and the picture gives me those clues so I want to use my pictures to give me clues but before I read I want to read these sentences and have these questions in my brain so when I'm reading this story those questions are there and then when I read the answer to a question I go aha that's the answer to that question and then after I finish the story I can pull that answer out of my brain or refer back to the story I just read and write the answer down here. So, I'm going to read the three sentences now. Sentence number one says, How do you know Greg is grumpy? Question number two says, What did the author, the person who wrote this story, do to try to cheer Greg up? So what did the author do to cheer Greg up? And the third one says, what does grinned mean? So you're going to have to um, read it in this sentence. And maybe you've already known. Maybe your, your brain knows, hey, if somebody's got a grin, then they're looking like this. And what would that mean if someone had a grin on their face? So I'm going to read it to you right now. I've read the three sentences. We're going to read it. Grumpy Greg. And here's the story. Greg could not stop crying. He was so grumpy. I gave him grapes. He was still grumpy. I gave him a green toy. He was still grumpy. I let him, <laughs> this is how it reads, so this is how we're going to read it. I think there's a mistake in the sentence, but this is what it says. I let him to play in the grass. He was still grumpy. Finally, Grandma picked him up. Greg grinned. He was not grumpy anymore. Okay, so there's any more. That's a compound word. 
any and more put together makes any more. Um, in crying, we talked about this before we went to spring break, but the Y in crying says I, so it's crying. Um, the Y at the end of grumpy says E. That Y is it's just can be all kinds of things for us when we need it to be. It's such a special letter. So I read the story about Grumpy Greg. It talked about grapes. It talked about grass. And then it talked about a grandma. And something made life better for Grumpy Greg. So how do you know Greg is grumpy? Greg could not stop crying. Or you could just put Greg was crying. I want complete sentences. Starts with a capital, ends with a period. Use the words from the story to help you write the answer. It says, what did the author do to cheer Greg up? Well, you could say, he gave him grapes. You could say, he gave him a toy. He let him play in the grass. So, or you could do it, put all three. The author, you could use the words from the sentence, but remember it has to start with a capital. The author gave Greg grapes, toys, and let him play in grass. Those are a lot of words for that one little line. So remember, as always, if you run out, you can write the rest of it on the back. You can just shoot me a front and a back picture of Grumpy Greg. And then, what does grinned mean? Grinned means he's happy, sad, angry. What does grinned mean? So, that's Grumpy Greg. Okay, a little more work to do. And if you get lost, get um, an adult or an older sibling who can help you to do it. But you can do this. You can highlight the girls in the story. You might look through and see, is there a word in there that you don't know? And ask someone to help you with reading it. Remember to read the sentences before you read the story so your brain will be looking for those answers. Um, and then write these incomplete sentences. That's Grumpy Greg. Then I gave you a second story called Ralph. And I chose this because there's that PH that we talked about a little bit. And PH says... <sighs> Sounds like F. <sighs> it it says a lot of things too. It can be versatile. Versatile means it can be used in other sound pictures. But for today, we're just doing the f sound. Same thing. Take your favorite color. Go through and find all the f pHs that are in the story and highlight it. And then when you're reading the story and you come to that word and you've got to sound it out, here's g, off, er, gaffer. Does that make sense? There was a gaffer. Does he look like he's playing golf? No, let's go back and look. There was a g, o. So if we cut that into two syllables, the first syllable is go, g, o, because it's open. There's no letter after that. It's called an open syllable, so it's the long o sound gopher. There was a gopher that lived in our yard. Hmm, that reminds me of our story that we wrote together. And you know what? I think in the third video I'll read that story because I have that book here with me too. So I'll read that story to you that we wrote about when I got hit in the head. We wrote that right before Christmas. So, you're going to be reading about Ralph the Gopher, but remember, I highlight all the PHs so I can know that when I see those, it's going to say, like, gopher. Here's another one um, that might be hard. Er, O, F, and that Y says E, trophy. So, let's read the sentence, or the questions, the comprehension questions first. What type of animal was Ralph? What was the problem in the story? There's going to be a problem. What happened at the end of the story? All right. 
I'll read this to you quickly too. Ralph, there was a gopher that lived in our yard. His name was Ralph. He was so hard to find. My sister wanted to see Ralph. I tried taking a photo. Oh, goodness, there's a PH I missed. If I missed it, I got to lay it down and mark it. PH in photo. I tried taking a photo of Ralph, but he was too fast. I tried calling her on the phone when I saw Ralph. She was too slow. One day, she was outside with me. We saw Ralph. She was so proud that she gave me a trophy. So, what kind of animal was Ralph? In the first sentence, it tells us, what's the problem in the story? She, who wanted to see Ralph? Her sister wanted to see Ralph, and she couldn't see him because he was so fast. He was she just couldn't catch him in time. So what happened at the end of the story? Well, she finally saw Ralph. And she was so excited, she gave her sister a trophy. So those are the stories that I want you to read in video two. Grumpy Greg and Ralph and Mark the, the Blends. Grr. Mark the PH the, um, in the story. Read the sentences, comprehension sentences first. Remember, write your answer in a sentence that starts with a capital and ends with a period. And if you need to, you can flip it over and write it on the back. All right. Now, remember, if this is a little bit too hard, that's what we want. We want it to be a little bit hard um, because then you're growing your brain and making mistakes is part of growing our brain. So... We don't beat ourselves up about it. We just say, hey, mistakes are part of growing and we're growing our brain. So try the words, see if they make sense. If you, re I read there was a golfer that lived in my yard. Does that make sense? Not to me. It doesn't, there's no golfer. So I need to go back and look at that again. Let's, instead of saying offro, let's say ofro. There was a gofer. There was a gopher that lived in our yard. And do you know what? There is a hole that's been dug at the base of my gigantic old tulip tree in my front yard. And my granddaughter Bronwyn was over, and we were looking at that hole trying to figure out what it was. I don't think it's the squirrel's hole. And we're not quite sure. But we thought, I wonder if that's a gopher hole. I don't know. Very, very, it's a mystery right now. We're trying to figure out. Anyway, there was a gopher that lived in the yard, and his name was Ralph, and he was hard to find. You're going to read the rest of that story by yourself. You're going to read about Grumpy Greg. I hope you're not a Grumpy Greg, and if you are, then maybe you need to find your grandma so she can give you a hug and cheer you up. Now, Bronwyn and I, we don't get close because of the virus that's going around. So when we see each other from a distance, we put our arms around each other and go like this to each other. And that's how we give each other a hug from far away. So you can give your grandmas a long distance hug so you can get a grin on your face and put a grin on grandmas. Okay, be good, obey your parents, help with the house, Pick up your toys, pick up your dirty clothes, and put them in the pile where they belong. Um, you can do this. You can do that. Um, help with whatever um, chores that need help. Maybe you can um, feed the dog, feed the cat. Um, throw the blankets up on your bed. You don't have to make a perfect bed, but you could throw the blankets up and cover your bed so you're like making your bed. It's just some of the things that you can do because you guys are perfectly capable of doing that kind of thing. Because you're first graders all on your way to being second graders and helping out because you're part of a family. Important stuff to learn to do in first grade, like make a bed. So, take care. 
and I will see you in video three.